Welcome to the Automation Zone, a video series brought to you by Miracle's RPA Center of Excellence. Hi, this is Isha, working as RPA developer in Miracle Innovation Labs. Today, I would like to give you a demo on creating material in SAP using Metabot. The main thing behind this demo is code optimization. We'll see how we can achieve code optimization using Metabot in this video. These are the topics which I'm going to cover in this video. Is automation necessary? Exploring cognitive process automation, IBM RPA overview, and what are the bots present in it, architectural flow, and live demo of creating material in SAP using Metabot. So this is our first slide. Is automation necessary? In industries, we wish our working world would be with less human interaction in our work, avoid repetitive works, processing large amounts of data quickly. Similar to this, lot more questions, we have a single answer, IBM RPA AA. Likewise, if we want cost savings and improved customer experience and improved accuracy or control to be present at the same place, then obviously we need to go for automation. Now let us see the difference between chatbots and RPA in our next slide. Exploring cognitive process automation. So in this, initially we have robotic process automation that is mainly used for repetitive tasks and which we discussed previously. So in RPA, again, we have two types. The very first one is rule-based automation, which executes repeatable tasks that requires no human expertise. For example, uh, I want to generate an email for 100 hundreds of users. So this is a repetitive task, which does not require any human expertise. So we can say this is an example for rule-based automation. And second one is knowledge-based automation, which executes tasks that require human expertise. For example, if you take a real-time scenario that robot is cooking, robot is dancing. So these are all come under knowledge-based automation. So next, we have an automation anywhere, UiPath, IBM. So these are all the tools for robotic process automation. Then we have conversational chatbots, which understands natural language. So we prefer coding to communicate with the bots and to serve the request. So we also have Amazon Alexa, IBM. So these are all the tools of conversational chatbots. So by using this, we can develop our bots. So let us see what is IBM RPA AA. So IBM RPA automates the repetitive tasks, which free up employees to perform higher value work. So before moving further, we'll see why we call it as IBM RPA AA. So previously, we used to call it as Automation Anywhere. Recently, IBM got mingled up with Automation Anywhere and releases a new product called IBM RPA, which we are using now. We'll see how it helps to us. It greatly reduces our time, human error, increases our speed of work, reduces the internal and external resources. Now let us see what are the components required to work with IBM RPA. So these are all the three main components which require to work with IBM RPA. The very first one is bot creators, control room, and bot runners. Bot creators are used to create our bot. Control room, uh, it provides the status of our environment, like how many tasks we have been scheduled, how many tasks are pushed into the control room. So these status will be provided by the control room. And bot runners is useful to schedule our bot. So at what time? which bot should need to be run. So these are all be managed by bot runners. So we'll see what are the bots present in IBM RPA. These are the three bots present in IBM RPA, task bot, IQ bot, and meta bot. So task bot is mainly used for repetitive tasks like we previously discussed uh, in areas like IT service or HR administration or ticketing system or data entry. So these are all the places we can use Task bot. So for repetitive tasks, we can use this. An IQ bot, so it is mainly used to extract both structured and unstructured data. So it has the unique ability to learn by studying human behavior to instantly identify common customized layouts and fields in any process intensive human-centric environment. So it applies human logic to document patterns, extracting values the way a human would do. And the last one is the meta bot. We call it as App resilient because of the great feature it has, reusability of code. So we will see more on Metabot in our next slide. We can call it as the blueprint of an application because of the great feature it has, reusability, so which increases our optimization of code. So this Metabot can be created 
and we can call it in our task box. So Metabots, uh, you know, automate without requiring access to the live application. So previously, uh, we used to record the screens using Metabot. So currently, we don't require any live application to work with it. So we can easily calibrate it to newer versions. So previously, I have a old screen. Now it, it's got updated. So I can just, uh, you know, use some of the options in Metabot like Configure, Calibre. So based upon that, I can balance between the two screens. So we can we also have those options in Metabot. So these Metabots can be reused. So suppose if I have a Metabot, if another person want to use my Metabot, so then I can send my Metabot to them so that they can call my Metabot in their task board. So this is the reusability of the code. Now let us see how we can create a Metabot in IBM RPA. So initially we need to log into IBM RPA and click on create Metabot. So in Metabot we have two fields, the very first one is assets and second one is logic. So in assets we need to capture the screen and whereas in logic we need to write the logic for the captured screen. So now we click on capture screen in asset. So after clicking we need to check whether the field is identified by the Metabot or not. So if in a browser I have a text box, sometimes the text box may be identified by the Metabot and sometimes it may not. We will see the both the cases. What happens if the text box is identified by the Metabot? Then we need to click on create logic. So for the captured screen, we need to write the logic and we need to perform the operations like set text or get text or you know pass in the keystrokes or something like and again saving the logic. Now let us see what will happen when the text box cannot be identified by the Metabot. Then we will go for the creating custom field which can be created by us. So we are indirectly saying that the bot should need to identify that field. So after uh, creating the custom field for that particular field, again we need to click on create logic, perform operations regarding that and saving the logic. Now we'll see the architectural flow. Initially, we need to log in into SAP GUI and get the details from the CSV file. If a row exists in a CSV file, then it creates a new material in SJP using this created metabot. If not, then it saves the CSV file and come out of the SJP GUI. So this process repeats until the record present in the CSV file. Now we will see the live demo of creating material in SJP using metabot. This is the task bot where we can uh, write our code and execute our bot. So we can see here, here we have my metabots. So we can drag and drop these metabots here so that we can utilize those metabots. And we can see also here metabot and again SAP login metabot and again creating material data entry metabot and again close window metabot. So these many metabots we can reuse everywhere and every time without uh, writing the code every time. So we can use this metabots wherever necessary. So I will just run the code. Initially it logs into the SAP GUI with a given credentials. So meanwhile it checks the CSV file whether any row exists or not. So this is the transaction code and it starts entering uh, the details for creating the material. We can see here at the right hand side the execution part. It was showing the line number 22. So at line number 22, it was uh, trying to find the window. So it just starts entering the details. So these message box, instead of delay times, we can keep these message boxes. So as we don't have delay activity in Metabot. So instead of that, I kept the message box here. Obviously, it needs a delay time to click uh, and to go to another activity. So at the last, uh, it enters the data and it saves. So it closes the execution. So this is how we can use a Metabot. So for Metabot, 
as we discussed previously we can reuse those metabots wherever uh, necessary in our task board we can call it in our task board easily so suppose if i want to use the sjp login so every time i need not to write the code i can call this metabot i can send this metabot to any of my colleague and they can use this metabot in the task board so this is how uh, we can work with metabot thank you Thank you for watching The Automation Zone, a video series brought to you by Miracle's RPA Command Center. For more about automation, please visit miraclesoft.com RPA.